just want to give God all the glory and honor and praise that he yes. deserves because he is worthy of our
just more of just let it have it. Let, let this song you know, just pour in somebody's soul and let it be able to just have a good practice where they reach it. Just gonna pray. Amen. Amen. So just a um, couple quick announcements. Um, really, there's not much to announce, honestly. Um, we have a, a community cookout in the works, and so um, we're going to definitely be doing that in May. So uh, we'll definitely be updating everyone on that, uh, letting you know when that's going to be. Uh, we're looking at the, the 18th, but I'll definitely confirm that with you all um, as we get more details. Um, then also, uh, we you started our Wednesdays, so uh, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. here at 2701 Holmes Hill Pike in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh, we have started Wednesday Night Light, uh, and that is an opportunity for us to have Bible study every Wednesday, amen? So amen. we started doing that every Wednesday, so if you have a, we'd love for you to come out and fellowship with us um, on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. right here at 2701 Halls Hill Pike, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 37130. Uh, and yeah, love to see your face, love to see your face, love to see your face, amen. Um, and then the last thing, um, what we do every Sunday here at Way Truth Life Church, we love to do um, gratitude over attitude. And what gratitude over attitude is an opportunity for us to be able to tell God what we are thankful for. To tell God um, in those situations that may look a little bleak, may look a little like, I don't really understand, Father, what you're doing. I don't know what it is that is going on right now, but um, it, it's hard for me to see the good, right? But then when you kind of step back and you, and you look at your situation, uh, allow for the Spirit of God to just uh, pour into your heart and you just change your perspective on your situation. And then now, you all of a sudden think, you know what? Maybe I don't know exactly what you're doing, Father God, but I know that you're good. And for that, I'm going to thank you. And so that's what our gratitude or our attitude moment is. And so if, or not, I don't even say if, but I know everybody got something. Everybody got something. You can find something, right? And so we're just going to take this uh, maybe a minute or so. Just find somebody that you don't know and tell them about what God has been doing in your life, what you are thankful for. Um, and that is our gratitude over attitude. So just, yeah, just find somebody that you haven't met. I know it's, you know, small, so, you know, it's all good. Just find somebody, you know what I mean? Find somebody and tell them what you're thankful for. Amen.
praise and worship. So I'm going to turn it over to our wonderful praise and worship leader. Amen. Amen.
He said, I like your Christ, but I don't like your Christianity. That's a deep concept right there. Right. Because if you think about it, nobody really dislikes Jesus, right? Like, how can you dislike Jesus and what he stood for? Um, usually when people have a problem with Christianity, it's because of the people. It's typically because of the representatives of Christianity. Yeah. And now, Jesus will force you to make a decision. Right? You cannot, you can come as you are, but you don't stay as you are. Jesus Christ does. If you follow him properly, if you really and truly are a disciple of Christ, you cannot stay the same. He will force you to make a decision. But generally speaking, when we think about Christianity, people don't really dislike Christ. It really boils down to the representation of Jesus by his people. Yeah. And oftentimes, um, we get caught up in being the show. We get caught up in being the main focus, the center of attention. And we really have to get back to a point or transition to a point where Christ is the main attraction. Yeah. If this is a movie, Jesus Christ is the star of that movie. Yes. We are just the extras. We're just extras in the movie to help the movie go along, or we're, we're, we're playing roles in a particular movie. But you know, sometimes extras be doing the most, don't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. You ever, ever watch a, a movie, and you just like, you see a, a extra in the background, and they're doing what the title said, or they're, they're being extra in that moment. They're just trying to do everything they can to get that attention to the camera. Yeah, right. You see them in the back just, oh, you know, doing something crazy. Somebody's supposed to laugh. They get all extra. They are extra. Extra with it, right? right. And a lot of times um, we don't actually, in a movie, we don't get to see it because the director will notice that and be like, hey, nah. <laughs> we, we're going to edit around that, edit around that or, or take that out and complete it. Just take it out. But um, in the church, in Christianity, we've gotten confused. We start thinking that we are the star hmm. when we're just the extra. And extras be doing the most. Extras be doing the most, man. I, um, never mind, I didn't even say that. I was about to give an example, but I don't want to seem like I'm going shade on the body. But I just continue to say that extras, we be doing the most. Mm -hmm. And then church hurt <laughs> often occurs when extras are doing the most. And taking the focal point and removing it from Christ and putting it on themselves. Hmm. Right? The good shepherd is the star of this movie. Is the good shepherd that is a star. And a good extra knows that the attention needs to go to the star. A good extra knows their role. A good extra knows not to try to pull any attention away, but merely just play the role Good extra knows. And oftentimes, maybe too much for our day and time, the extras are trying to be the ones out front. And our focus needs to be on the shepherd. And so as we walk through the text, we see that Jesus, initially he is, he is talking to his disciples here. And he is um, he's talking to them, talking to them about the Pharisees and kind of their whole uh, approach and the things that they're doing. And so when we get to this point, he's just pouring into his disciples and he's letting them know the difference between an extra and the good shepherd, or a hireling and a good shepherd. He says that I am the door. Jesus says I am the door. And if anyone in, if anyone enters. By me, he will be saved and will go on and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. And I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Hmm. And really, 
I don't even have three points today. I really just have one point. Mm. Everything is summed up by the one point, which is, honestly, it's the title. Focus on the shepherd. Yeah. Focus on the shepherd because he is the door. Yeah. He says, I am the door. He, he, he is the door. He is the, the gate. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He yeah. is. Yeah. Jesus yeah. is yes. the door. And people experience hurt. Because too often we run it into the door keepers. We run it into door keepers. The extras that, that are trying to fill the void, or, or not even say fill the void, but fill the space that belongs to Jesus step into. It's almost like they, 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 they want to be security guards. They want to tell you who is allowed into heaven and who's not. They want to act like they are the only people responsible for providing the revelation of God. And that's true. And, and in leadership, it's true that you know you, you do have the opportunity to, to minister the gospel. You do have the opportunity to speak unto the people and to pour into the people. And it is a very serious job. It is a very serious role that is being played. But we are actually supposed to be chauffeurs and not security guards. Amen? We're not supposed to be the security guards standing at the door determining who is holy and who is not. But instead, we are chauffeurs it's, uh, taking people to the Father. Ushering people to the Father. Seems like everybody want to be Peter. But nobody want to be like Andrew, man. We, we, a lot of people want to be Peters. Peter was able to, uh, when we see Peter, Peter walked on water, albeit, you know, he fell, you know, for a second, and then and, and God reached down and, and pulled him back up, but he had the faith to walk on water. Peter was able to heal. Peter was able to speak in tongues. Peter was able to do all these apostolic things. But he also failed, too. He also denied Christ. He also did all these things. But, 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 but we, when we think of Peter, we do think of him as that uh, a failure, but we also see his redemption, and we see what he's able to do based off of his redemption, but nobody really talks about Andrew, his brother, because Andrews played a, a Andrew played a very important role because Andrew brought Peter to Jesus. Andrew brought Peter to Jesus. And, G, and, and Peter is the one that ends up getting written about in Scripture. He even wrote some epistles and he is and, and made himself into the inner circle with Christ and he walked with him and talked with him and just was in the in the very inner circle with Jesus. And Andrew doesn't necessarily get that kind of uh, uh, he, he's not written about in that way. Mm -hmm. But Andrew introduced Peter to Jesus. He wasn't trying to bring a lot of attention unto himself, but he did what he was supposed to do. He brought somebody to Christ. And that's what our job is. That's, that's at the end of the day, that's what we're really supposed to do. We're not supposed to make it about ourselves. We're not bringing people unto ourselves. We are bringing people to Christ. Amen. Bring somebody to Christ. Yes. You don't want to function in a way and where we make it all about ourselves. And it's easy to do that. When you stand before people and you get their adoration, we are not supposed to get caught up in the adoration of people, but we get caught up in the adoration that we are supposed to have for Jesus Christ. Right. But when we have our adoration towards people, and as we sit in the pews and we look at somebody that can just speak with such power and such uh, and or orate with such uh, 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 just they're just amazing at it. And you can just look at the person and just be in awe. And then that person senses it and they, and they use that awe. But just like Peter, who was able to walk on water, who was able to speak in tongues, who was able to heal, who was able to do all of these things, he still failed. And these people that stand behind pulpits are merely people and they will fall. That's why our focus has to be up. Amen. People will let you down. That's why our focus needs to be 
needs to be up. We need to direct our focus to Christ. Please don't look at me or no other leader or anybody in the space of him. It's all about him. Right? But the thief, the thief, the, the cunning thief, the clever thief, he comes to do what? He comes to steal and to kill and destroy. Yes. Right? And, and, and one of the most, if not the most expensive things that you have on you is the joy that you have for the Lord. You know how you feel when you first get saved and you just want to tell everybody you know about Christ. Yeah. And, and, and you, you're just so zealous for the Lord and fearless for the Lord because you've seen what he's done in your life. And so you just want to tell everybody you know. And the enemy would love nothing more than to say, yeah, let me get that. Mm. And yeah, come off of that. I need that joint off you right now. And if we're not careful, we just let the enemy just take it from us. Take our joy. Because we're not focused on the one above. Yes. We're not focused on him. And we gotta make sure that we are focused on him and do not let man separate you from the love of God. Separate you from the joy of the Lord. You know, as a... Um, so I love my sports analogies, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Tigers fan and I'm a 49ers fan, right? I, I like both teams. I got two teams. I ain't gonna take the time to get into why at this moment in time. Um, you know what? Actually, I will. You know, the Titans went here, and uh, because just for anybody, anybody that's like, oh, you got a team, you know, I'm not a bandwagon, nothing like that. Um, the 49ers were on TV when I was a little boy, I used to watch the 49ers, and then the Titans didn't come until like 1999, so I, I got two teams, right? Um, but in both cases, both teams have had some ups and some downs, right? You, you, you've seen the Titans be good. You've seen them be not so good. Same thing for the 49ers. You've seen them be good, and you've seen them not be so good. You've seen them make good choices in the draft. You've seen them make some bad choices in the draft. You've seen the players make some good choices on the field. You've seen the players make some bad choices on the field. Some that will win you a game. Some that will lose you a game, but all through it, right. I'm devoted. Yeah. I'm devoted. I'm like, yeah, well, this going to be our year. We, we probably going to win this year, and, and I'm still going to watch every single game. I'm showing up. Every single. Well, I ain't going to show up in the Titans Stadium because it's too, you know, I ain't going to try to do all that because we got church. But, yeah, I'm going to show up. I'm going to be sitting in front of my TV, right, watching the game for as long as I can before I have to come here. But the point is, I'm going to show up. I'm going to be there to support my team. Same thing for the 49ers. When I can, I'm going to be there to support my team because you know what? It is bigger than any player on that field. Mm -hmm. It's about the colors that they are putting on. Mm -hmm. It's about that team, that logo that's on the front of the jersey, and that ain't going to change. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens to the back of the jersey, that logo on the front, and that's where my allegiance is. That's where our allegiance is to what's on the front. And too often, too often the people of God are leaving the team, the kingdom team, because of what somebody has on the back of the church. We will let what's on the back, we'll let mistakes, we'll let people, missteps, we'll let all these things get in the way of the joy that we have for Jesus and the love that we have, that he has for us because we are too busy focused on the fear. Wow. Yes. Mm. Too busy focused on it. Amen. And regardless of whether they make it to the Super Bowl, or, or, or not, I'm going to be showing up. I'm going to be right there supporting my team. Yes. But the funny thing is, is that regardless of the, what's going on in your life, if you, you are a child of God, and guess what? You have the victory. You've already won your Super Bowl. Jesus already won the Super Bowl. He already achieved the crowning achievement. Yes. He already did it. Christ says, you have the victory. And that's why he came to give his life. Amen. And he 
gives us life. He says, not only do I want you to have life, but I want you to have life more abundant. A life that is more abundant. A life that is overflowing and overfilled with joy because you have the victory. We don't have to. I understand that life happens, but you have the victory. It's like watching a game that you already recorded, that you already seen what happens at the end of the game. You already know, man, listen, my team got the victory. You're not going to watch a recorded game and be up and down at every interception or every fumble or anything like that, every missed shot of your basketball friend, every little thing, if you already know the outcome. Mm. Yes. But why is it that we can so blown back and forth So 
I pay for it. Mm. I pay for it. It's a gift. Right. It is a gift. Right. It's like, that's like somebody trying to, Lord Jesus, help me. That's like somebody trying to sell me my dad's phone number. That's like somebody trying to sell me my daddy's phone number, man. But I can just walk right back and I'll go back to my dad's house anytime that I want. I do not need nobody to sell me my father's phone number. Amen. Don't buy that stuff. Don't buy it. If it's for you, you seek God. Go directly to your father. It's a reason why the veil was split after he died. Yes. It's a reason why the curtain was torn after he died. Because now we have direct access to him. Yes, yes, hallelujah. We don't have to go through nobody. We don't need a middleman to access our father. Yes, thank you, thank you. That's why the wolf has such easy access to the sheep. Mm. Because they are mistaking a hireling for the shepherd. Mm. And the wolf has easy access. And then when you realize that this, 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 this is not the good shepherd, this is not Jesus, this is not who I'm supposed to be paying attention to, that's when you get hurt. Mm. Because for so long I was following this person. And I've been let down. We got to be following Jesus. We got to follow Jesus. That's, and, 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 and look, get, get this, this is what happens. When you hurt, you end up leaving that church. And then on some instances, you end up leaving God in general, just separating yourself from the church and from God. But look what Christ says that what came to do. The wolf does. He says, he snatches them and then he scatters them. He didn't say that he snatches them and eats them. He didn't say that he snatches them and devours them. He said he snatches them and then scatters them. What are we talking about? What does that what does it mean to scatter? It means to separate. Right? It means to separate. So when you see that you you you, you get hurt and then you separate yourself from the church, that is exactly what the enemy came to do. Wow. Why do we think that the world is so divided right now? It's because the wolf mm. has come and he's separated the sheep. Wow. The sheep wow. are scattered. And it is so apropos that we are compared to sheep. Because to be honest, sheep aren't very smart animals if you didn't know. They're not very smart. They just follow whatever. They just go along with whatever. That's why they need a shepherd to guide them. Yes. Yes. But if the wolf can come in, the wolf will separate the sheep. And if the sheep don't have the shepherd, then they'll just follow whoever steps up to claim to be the shepherd. separate you. And when you separate from God, just know he is never separated from you. He's never separated from you. Amen. The hireling flees. Verse 13 says the hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep. That's so dope that you sang that song. Thank it's like you know that the Holy Spirit is involved in this, but we didn't talk Thank about you. that. Thank you, Lord. Jesus says, I know my sheep, and I am known by my sheep. Mm. The hireling doesn't care. We know this, we, we, we know this is true. Because can you imagine? And some of you may experience this where you got church hurt. You walked away from the church. Walked away from a particular body. And ain't nobody call. Mm. Ain't nobody check on you. Right. See how you was doing. Mm. Ain't nobody ask you why. Mm. You just left and it was as if it didn't even matter. 
Because in certain places, we become statistics. We become a number. Yeah, miss your offering, that's for sure. But they don't really miss your presence. That's because they have a higher than in the position of leadership. And there's too many higher things in position of leadership. That's why we have so much church hurt going on. Too many higher things. And unfortunately, people, we, 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 don't, we don't take the time to get to know the Father for ourselves. And so we're easily hurt. And we'll just walk away completely. Because we don't know him. He says, I know my sheep. And I am known by my sheep. So then the question becomes, do you know him? Do you know him? The invincible one, the indispensable one, do you know him? The sensational one, the irreplaceable one, do you know him? The incredible one, the immeasurable one, do you know him? The perfect one, he put his foot on the head of the serpent one, do you know him? The living one, the merciful and forgiving one.
Jesus. Jesus.